study your history, brothers and sisters. The skin is an antenna to God. That melanin inside your beautiful, beautiful black skin is an antenna to God. When you hear the music, the color in your skin answers the music that you hear. You're the only people that's like that. They call us in secret the indigenous people of the earth. Look that word indigenous up. It means natural to the planet. You are the aboriginal people of the earth. Look that word up. It means you first. It means God with his hands made us. And once God makes something, nobody can outdo what God did. Yes. Here we are again. Back at it. You know what I mean? So, um, just wanted to let everybody know that my son is the cameraman today. Brother Jabril, who sent away for his, uh, sent his letter away, came back. And praise be to Allah, they accepted it. So the only thing he has to do now, before he can become official, is go ahead and recite. I also want to give my daughter, the princess, Zariah, a shout out and the salams from both of us, Zariah. Assalamu alaikum. She's a hardworking college student and we didn't want to put the burden on her of having to do more than college. We all know how hard college is. So we're going to open up. Uh, thanking Almighty God, Allah. We open up in his name. In the name of Allah, we thank him for coming to us in the wilderness of North America and raising up for us a divine leader, teacher and guide, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we further thank him for raising up the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan as his divine reminder in our midst today. So it's in your names that we greet you in the Nation of Islam's greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. <clears throat> so what we're going to be doing today is part two to the uh, video that we just got finished doing a couple weeks ago entitled How to Deal with Depression. So this is how to deal with depression part two. Uh, just the layout before we get started, part one was dealing with the personal way that we deal with depression. This one is dealing with a nation and how we deal with depression as a nation of people because we all know that the black community and the original people today are very depressed. So we're going to deal with how to deal with that depression and um, part three which we want you to very, you know, look forward to seeing, inshallah, will be on how we deal with depression globally. But uh, back to what we were talking about today, I have my Holy Quran here, I have my Holy Bible, and I have my Supreme Wisdom. So we're just gonna go ahead and work it out. I'm gonna do a couple announcements before we get started. Of course, we have the Final Call newspaper. All praises be to Allah, we're back with our paper. And uh, make sure you get one, make sure you go on and uh, subscribe, digital, final call. Uh, make sure you can, you can get these uh, delivered to your house. We wanna also let, you know, the listening audience, the viewing audience, audience know that because of the COVID-19, the coronavirus, you know, all of these things can be delivered right to your house. You can catch us on Sunday. Uh, wanna give definitely a shout out to Brother Minister Student Minister Nori Muhammad, who gave an awesome lecture last week, and so did uh, Minister Ishmael today. So we just go, you just go on NOI.org to uh, keep up with the things and the guidance that the Nation of Islam is giving weekly on Sunday. We go into our study sessions on Wednesday nights, 730, uh, the time of what must be done. And that's what we deal with on Wednesday night. And on Friday nights, 7.30, same time, we deal with self-improvement, where we go into our study guides, and that's Sister Ava Muhammad. I'd like to give her a shout out to another student in the ministry, a student minister in the Nation of Islam. So with all that being said, family, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I pray, we thank Allah for giving us the words to give that may be inspiring and uh, words of guidance that we're already given to us by those great men that we refer to at the opening of our video. So without further delay, we want to go right into it. Uh, continuing from last 
the last video, which was a couple weeks ago, how to deal with depression. We talked about how the things that cause depression, of course, uh, confusion causes depression and feeling like you have no direction, you have no purpose. These are the things that kind of cause uh, depression. Not only does that work for individuals, it also works as a nation. So here we are, a nation of people whom the Bible says a people that are not even a people at all, that uh, God would come to a people that wouldn't even be a people. So first scripture is Isaiah chapter 50. He comes to a people that's not even looking for him. A people that don't think they're good enough to even have a savior sent to them. In the Holy Quran as well, I believe that's chapter three, verse 48. Okay. Is it 348? Well, let's deal with Isaiah. Let's deal with Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 50, and I know it's verse one. This is God. Verse 1, chapter 50. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities, which is wickedness, have ye sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother's is your mother put away? Verse 2. Wherefore, this is God talking, when I came, so it must be in the person, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or do I, or have I no power to deliver? Now, this is a very, very Interesting scripture where Almighty God is coming in the person of a man because we know the spirit of Allah is omnipresent. It's always there. So whenever we talk about the coming of God, where he's coming from one place to another, that is dealing with God in person. And this God that would come to us would come to us and find no man. No man that would be a counselor to us. No man that would give us the clarity that would help us to get out of uh, that depressed state that we would be in. So, when the man came, that man would give us a divine teaching, a supreme wisdom, a, a word and a message that the Christians call the Holy Spirit with many different uh, metaphors and even the word idiom, where it would just give you pictures of wine and not know and not let you know what that wine really represents, where it says that Jesus would turn the water into wine at the wedding. And the wine representing a clear and pure understanding of the word where the marriage between us and Almighty God Allah can be complete. Of course, without the right understanding and a watered down understanding, then the marriage could never take place for, between us, which is the bride and the bridegroom who Jesus was trying to marry us to. So one would come and that one would find no man that would be present, that when he came and asked us certain questions, we would not be able to answer the questions that that man would ask. So with our supreme wisdom, those questions that would be asked would number one, expose what we don't know. 
And number two, give us the very thing that we would need so that we could know. All right. So in the Holy Quran, chapter three, and um, I want to start at 45, but I was going to uh, verse 48. Where it says, so I'll start at 45 and go all the way down to 48. Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah the Beneficent and Merciful. It says, when the angel said, O Mary, surely Allah gives thee good news with a word from him of one whose name is the Messiah, Jesus. Not Jesus the prophet, but Jesus the Messiah. Son of Mary. Worthy of regard in this world and the hereafter and of those who are drawn nigh, meaning near, to Allah. Verse 46. And he will speak to the people when in the cradle and when of old age. And he will be one of the ones, one of the good ones. Verse 47, she said, my Lord, how can I have a son? And man has not yet touched me. He said, even so, Allah creates what he pleases. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, be, and it is. Be, and it is. And that's the word that Allah uses to create. Now, here's verse 48. It says, and he will teach him mm, the book and the wisdom and the Torah and the gospel. So our board, I would like to write that on the board, but we're going to do that next time because we, you know, at the end of the video, we're going to show you what's already on the board dealing with the uh, next topic that we do after we finish this one. But sticking to the subject with this particular topic. Four things are being said in verse 48. Number one, Allah, it says, and he, so he will be taught by Allah. It says, and he, capital H, will teach him, and him is Jesus, the book. That's one thing. And the wisdom, and the Torah, and the gospel. Now, that's very, very deep because we know that the book wasn't put together. It was scrolls before it was a book. The book wasn't put together until way later. So the only Jesus that would be given a book would be the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Jesus meaning savior. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is that savior for us today. Uh, it also talks about Jesus, the Messiah. Not Jesus the prophet. And that's verse 45. It refers to that Jesus as the son of Mary. See, we have to touch on all of these things. Because that son of Mary, Mary in the Bible, in the Holy Quran, is a virgin. And when we talked about metaphors and idioms and parables, that's when you're talking about something. And it's symbolism, symbolic of something else, right? So a metaphor would be something that symbolizes something else. So you use the term Mary, which means virgin, which means you're coming to a people where there is no man. Like we just read here in Isaiah 50. So no man to teach, no man to cultivate, no man to guide. That's what happened to our people. We're just setting the stage and setting the tone for which way we're getting ready to go because we're dealing with depression. It would be very, very depress depressing for people to not have wisdom, to not have guidance, to not have understanding of who you are, to not be connected to your power source, which is Almighty God Allah, and to not be clear on who it's putting you in a position like this, your enemy. That would be very depressing. And we would become, because of that, demon sponges where we would just 
absorb every wicked spirit out there. So when people call a black man and woman cursed, that is a curse when you don't have these things. So uh, the man that would come and give knowledge. Hold on now. That man, he would come with a wisdom and a knowledge of the exact thing that you're going through. So here we are in uh, the Holy Quran, chapter 31, verse 34. It says, surely Allah is he with whom is the knowledge of the hour. And he sends down the rain and he knows what is in the womb. And no one knows what he will earn on the morrow, on the morrow, and no one knows in what land he will die. Surely Allah is knowing aware. So the, the knowledge of the hour, of course, is the knowledge of the time in which we're living in, the exact day. When you say the hour, that's not dealing with prophecy, that's dealing with present day. So he would give us a knowledge. And the knowledge that he would give us, they would discredit that knowledge. Right here in America, that knowledge would come to a people who no man, like we said before, ever came to. Right? So no man would come to this people. And when the man came, he would be treated exactly like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is treated today. So right here in the Holy Quran, chapter 32, verse 3, it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Or do they say he has forged it, talking about that knowledge of the hour. Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord that thou mayest warn a people to whom no warner has come before. Now that's deep. Because when we look in scripture, Every people that was given revelation had warners before the revelation was given. The Arabs had Ishmael. So even if there's few prophets sent to the Arabs, they still had someone there. Of course, Jesus in the Holy Bible is a Jew. And so are his people Hebrew. The Hebrews and the Jews had many, many prophets, one after another sent to them. So these are little points that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that we would be the fulfillment of these uh, scriptures. We would be those people that Allah God would come himself and raise up one and teach one the knowledge of the hour and the people that would receive this message would be criticized by all who don't believe, which would be the majority, like it always is. The majority of the people did not believe in Moses. The majority of the people did not believe in Jesus. When he was crucified, it was just his mother and Mary Magdalene there with him. And maybe one, I think it was John, his brother. Today, in the nation of Islam, a minority of Muslims you know, unfortunately, and we implore our people to just look at yourself and look at scripture and it would end any type of national nation or, or depression as a nation because to know how special you are is no way you can be depressed. And that's where we go on with all of this. So this scripture in the Holy Quran is in fact definitely talking about the black man and woman in America because no warner came to us to warn us about slavery. And if slavery doesn't depress you, what will? You know what I mean? We were forced into the situation that we were prophesied to go into. And that was 400 years of affliction in a strange land. Genesis chapter 15. And without dragging this out too long after 400 years 
of affliction. It says in scripture that God will come and judge the nation whom we would serve. So God would come and judge the nation whom we would serve. Now, this is a scripture uh, I was looking for earlier too, Isaiah chapter 65, where it said that Allah God would come to a people that wasn't looking for him. Verse one, it says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. See, after 400 years of slavery, you wouldn't even know how to call God's name. Uh, prayer was, was forbidden. It was illegal for us to pray. It was illegal for us to read these holy scriptures. So it would be no way that we would be able to find ourselves in scripture, number one, and even be able to reach and understand the word that Almighty God is giving us as a guide. So no warner, no teacher, no man, because of what we would, we would endure after the 400 years of slavery that we would be forced into. Well, a lot of us get upset because of what happened. We get upset with Europeans. But this scripture that I'm going to read, that we read and we refer back to a lot. This is something that if you really parse through it and look at it carefully, how can the Europeans be, and I'm not big on uh, defending the enemy, <laughs> but whether that European is wicked or not, how can he be responsible for this if God already ordained it before he even came on the scene? So it says here in Genesis 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Verse 14. And also that that nation whom they shall serve, will I, God talking, judge. And America's under divine judgment right now. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance, possessions. And more than possessions, knowledge. And thou shalt go to thy father, their fathers, in peace. Now we came from the motherland. So the motherland is Africa, and that's where the fathers are. So they would go to their fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age, right? So after 400 years of slavery, we wouldn't know our backs from our fronts, if you understand what I'm saying, which would be a very depressing thing. No man lost your knowledge of self lost your knowledge of God, lost your knowledge of your enemy. You don't know your name. You don't know your, lang your language. You don't know your culture. You don't know God's name. So you would be, we would be sought or found or seeked out by a God that we wouldn't even know how to call. Now, everybody who believes in God, when something goes wrong, you call on that God. You have to be in a very, very, uh, uh, depressing state to give up on looking for God. If you don't know where he lives, you don't know what his name is, you don't know how to reach him, then you would have to just start going for yourself. And that's what our people do. Our people, that's how we handle our problems. We handle it on our own in the hood. We handle those problems on our own in the projects, in the bad neighborhoods that we have to live in. You know what I mean? So our final call newspaper, just 
We're going to jump off for a second. It says Satan promises only deceit or pr Satan promises only to deceive. It says why we can't trust any vaccine. And it goes into all of the things that they just won't stop doing. Won't stop doing. I'm showing our paper because I like to show problem. Then I like to show solution. You know what I mean? Problem. And I like to show solution. A lot of people go into the problem, but very few people go into the solution. So when you know who you are, there's no way you can be depressed because you are not, you're no longer confused and you're no longer feeling like a man or woman with no purpose. So who are we? Who are we? And what was given that the Holy Quran says that when we would be given this, they would say we made it up. They would say we forged it. The Holy Quran says that God would come to a people who no warner came before. No warner came before. Surah of the Holy Quran is entitled al Farkan, the warner. So we would get a warner and the message that would come from that warner as a reminder, because that's what al Farkan is. He is the discrimination. He's the one who does what you don't want to do. He knows who to follow and he knows who not to follow. He knows who to treat as a brother and who not to treat as a brother. See, that is divine wisdom and knowledge and divine discrimination. See, we would have to decide whose side we're going to be on. And right now, they already decided it for us. So... Hold on now. They already decided it for us. So, hold on for a minute. Three forty-eight. The Holy Quran, chapter three, verse forty-eight. I'm doing a lot of page page turning today. It's a little late, family, but we gonna make it happen. Verse 48, that's where we were before. It says, and when he will teach him the book and the wisdom, no, and he will teach him the book and the wisdom and the Torah and the gospel. And as he teaches these things, of course, since we already have these things, we, going, we would look at it like he made, made it up. So 32 verse 5. That's where I was going. Now we on track. The adoration. Verse 5 says, He orders the affairs from the heaven to the earth. Then it will ascend to him in a day, the measure of which is a thousand years as you can. Now, that's dealing with the time again. Like we said in 1 uh, Peter. 1 Peter chapter, what is that? 4 verse 8. One day to God is a thousand years to us. First Peter. Bible where it says that one day to God is a thousand years to us. I didn't get that. Where is it in the Bible where it says one day to God is a thousand years to us? Second Peter chapter four. Here's what I found. Second Peter chapter three verse eight. Okay, that was so much easier. We rolling Jabril. 
So it says right here, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, <laughs> that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Okay. So after six days, of course, that would be 6,000 years. And we talked about that in the last video that 1914 marked that 6,000 years that all of this knowledge would come to us. Like it says in the Holy Quran chapter 32, verse 5. So when the knowledge of the hour would come to us, verse 3 says from that same chapter 32, we're going to read from verse 1. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah the Beneficent and Merciful. Verse 1 says, I, Allah, am the best knower. So the knowledge is coming from Allah, not man. Verse 2, the revelation of the book, there is no doubt in it, is from the Lord of the worlds. Okay, verse 3, or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord that thou mayest warn a people to whom no warner has come before. Right? To a people that no warner has came come before thee, that they may walk aright. So that's the time we're living in now, brothers and sisters. So as we bring this beautiful talk to a close, we want to end with supreme wisdom. The, when the man came, he would ask certain questions and those questions that we would not be able to answer. The first question would be from student enrollment. And that is, who is the original man? And the answer is, the original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe, the student enrollment, your brother. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to help you out today <laughs> because you have to recite, son. So, who is the original man? And at that time, of course, we being ignorant after 400 years of slavery, we did not know that we were first. The further you go back in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, all of your movies about Adam, Eve, Moses, Jesus, of course, they were all white people that were in these movies. But once you get knowledge of self, you know that you are the original man. The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. That's knowledge of self. That's knowledge of your God, who is the colored man. Right? The colored man is the Caucasian white man or Yakub's grafted devil, the skunk of the planet Earth. Mm. When we know who we are, who God is, who the enemy is, right? And we've been through it before. The actual meaning, the deep meaning to our student enrollment, that we would be the original people of the planet. The makers, the owners, the cream of the planet Earth, the God of the universe, it says it right there in the book of uh, Daniel, where we are referred to as the ancient of days. The ancient of days. Of course, people misinterpret that or interpret it differently from us. But we know the ancient of days is not just dealing with God, but it's dealing with us. So that's uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. It says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Now, see, all of this has symbolic meaning. And of course, it's dealing with Jesus, but it's also dealing with the body of Christ, which is us. Jesus would come back for his people who were on this earth for a long, long time, a lot longer than 6,000 years. So now, family, what is the solution which way do we go? What should we really be happy about? If you are the gods of the world, 
gods of the universe. And when you are clear on your enemy and you know that there's nowhere else to go, this is the time we're living in now. There's nothing else for us to do but separate. Separation not meaning segregation, but separation meaning growth. You cannot grow when you don't know how to move from the state that you're in. A home that is comfortable at one point is not always comfortable once growth takes place. The womb was a home, but that womb eventually became too small for us to stay. And growth made us have to leave or separate from the womb. Just like a person who is in the house. I was just talking about grandma's house today and how it looks so small to me now that I'm over six feet. But when I was little, our house looked huge. But when you get older and have to grow, you grow, you grow out of the house and you must get your own house and you can make it as big as you want. So it is with America. America after 400 years of slavery, America after white supremacy has grown to making America the head of this beast or this dragon or this serpent, this ancient serpent that the Bible calls it. America is no longer our friend and we need to separate from her. And once we know that we can separate from her, first of all, it's no, it, it, it's, it's no choice. We don't have a choice in the matter. They are literally trying to kill us at this point because they understand who we are. So we must separate from them. And we must demand certain things from them. And if we don't get it, <clears throat> then we must call on our God and follow his Christ, the real one, and follow his reminder and do these things ourselves because everything that's on this page right here, we don't really have to wait for none of this. And that is the good news of the real gospel from the real Jesus. So I'm going to read as we come to a close the solution. And if the Holy Spirit of Allah has me to go into this, which we read many times before, but you cannot read it enough. I want to read the beginning of our solution. If we would just unite and vote for this, not Biden or Trump where you just get a skill butt whipping from one <laughs> and an ignorant butt whipping from the other or a delayed butt whipping from the other because when you're ignorant you can't even fight properly without getting into the politics like we did last time we want to just deal with the solution it says what the muslims believe this is the muslim program from the most honorable elijah muhammad it says this is the question asked most frequently by both whites and the blacks. The answer to this question I shall state as simply as possible. Number one, we want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. Hmm. Number two, we want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all regardless of creed or class or color. And three, we want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best of civilized society. Four, we want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minimally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate territory for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Since we cannot get along with them in peace, and equality after giving them 400 years 
of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever endured or experienced. We believe our human, we believe our human, no, ho, ho, ho. we believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America must justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. Now I'm going to read that part again because this is very, very critical. Bear with me, family. Since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality, after giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced, we believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. This is nothing but Black Wall Street. This is very, very realistic. This is no pipe dream. Point number five, we want freedom for all believers in Islam now held in federal prisons. We want freedom for all black men and women now under death sentence in innumerable prisons in the North as well as the South. We want every black man and woman to have the freedom to accept or reject being separated from the slave master's children in establishing a land of their own. We know that the above plan for the solution of the black and the white conflict is the best and only answer to the problem between two peoples. Hmm. Six, we want an immediate end to police brutality and mob attacks against the so-called Negro throughout the United States. You see how this is timeless? We believe that the federal government should intercede intercede to see the black men and women tried and white courts receive justice in accordance with the laws of the land or allow us to build a new nation for ourselves dedicated to justice freedom and liberty seven as long as we are not allowed to establish a state or territory of our own we demand not only equal justice under the laws of the United States, but equal employment opportunities now. And that's in all capital letters, exclamation mark. We do not believe that after 400 years of free or nearly free labor, sweat and blood, which has helped America become rich and powerful, that so many thousands of black people should have to subsist on relief charity or live in poor housing projects and stuff we don't want that here's eight we want the government of the united states to exempt our people from all taxation as long as we are deprived of equal justice under the laws of the land you know how we say we have a a, a, law, a um, set of rules for them and a set of rules for us Laws for them, laws for us, you shoot into somebody's house. And if that person that you shot into the house is white, then you get a little penalty for that. But if you shoot and kill somebody, our sister Brianna tell, may Allah give, bless that family with the strength that they need to get through that horrific experience and make the people that are supporting them, and we support you in the nation of Islam, stay strong and keep pushing. But a person that would do something like that, get off clean. See, this is a different set of laws for black and a different set of laws for white. And as long as that is going on, why should we pay taxes to a government who treats us that way? That's what this is saying. See, when you stop paying somebody, when you hold on to that cash, that makes you, you see, the pocket always hits harder than anything else. So I don't know if it's going to be all kind of static in this video because the most I have realized Muhammad and his solution is very powerful. But because of the time, we want to keep moving. So I'm going to read eight again. 
We want the government of the United States to exempt our people from all taxation as long as we are not, as long as we are deprived of equal justice under the law of the land. Nine, we want equal education, but separate schools up to 16 for boys and 18 for girls on the condition that the girls be sent to college, women's colleges and universities. We want all black children educated, taught and trained by their own teachers. Under such schooling system, we believe we will make a better nation of people. The United States government should provide, should provide. We got so much money, $1.3 trillion a year, we can provide. But the United States government should provide free, all necessary textbooks and equipment, schools and college buildings. The Muslim teachers shall be left free to teach and train their people in the way of righteousness, decency, and self-respect. We should be left alone to teach our people about melanin and the history and the real truth of Egypt and the real truth of these books, Holy Quran and Bible, without hindrance. And 10, lastly, as we close this beautiful talk, point number 10 says, we believe that intermarriage or race mixing should be prohibited. We want the religion of Islam taught without hindrance or suppression. These are some of the things that we the Muslims want for our people in North America. So as we close, we want to deal with that because the way the tormentors are, they like to throw rocks and hide their hand like the minister says. They like to trivialize the things that we ask for. They like to demonize the things that we want and the things that we know that we need. So here in point number two, when it talked about or talks about intermarriage being something that we believe that should be prohibited, we want it to be prohibited so that we can make a strong America. We believe that race mixing should be prohibited so that we can make a strong nation. And we also believe that it should be prohibited so that we can teach Islam to our children, our children, without hindrance. So, whenever you're trying to make a strong anything, you mix that thing or that people with their own people. It's nothing strange. It's really a mercy as we close, just in case we feel a little funny about that. I always thought about the race mixing that America hypocritically pretends that they're for. And when they see a point like this coming from us, call us racist and say that this is a horrible thing. I always looked at that as a major hypocritical uh, attempt to make us look like haters. When in reality, this right here will keep you around for a little while because if race mixing took place, you won't have a race anymore. So it seems like the nation of Islam is looking out for you as a recessive race of people. And if you want to be strong as a white race of people, why don't we go back to nature and do what God shows us, like the Holy Quran says, in everything there's a sign. When you look at the birds, you look at the bees, you look at all of creation, Allah being an orderly God keeps every creature with itself. But with all that being said, under the divine guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we're taught that where love is, legislation, a law, we don't legislate against love. So if a person is in love, that person, we don't believe that laws should dictate to that person how he or she should live their lives. This is a general solution and it should be looked at like that. But never forget that when you're divinely guided, then everybody can be strong and healthy. So with that being said, 
We want to bring this beautiful, beautiful, strong and lengthy talk to an end. We leave you as we came before you with the greeting words of peace. Stay tuned for the next video. Assalamu alaikum.